I still can't believe that some of the most popular mobile apps today still don't support a dark mode. Amazon, LinkedIn, Google Opinion Rewards, PayPal, and a ton more. Fortunately, there's a setting in Android's developer options that can fix this. It's a toggle labeled Override Force Dark, and it can force a dark interface throughout the entire device, including those apps that don't already support a dark theme. Pretty neat. Another annoyance from some apps is that they could be preventing your phone from going into a deep sleep, which prevents you from saving a good amount of battery. It's rare, but it happens. With background check in the developer options, you can see exactly which of those pesky apps are doing this. If you don't see anything, then you're in the clear. And that's just two out of the 15 hidden secrets found within the developer options. A menu that's filled with really advanced features, primarily targeted at UI and app developers. But that doesn't mean that you and I can't still have some fun tinkering around with this gold mine. A few months ago, I made a video going over every setting found within the developer options. Yes, every single one, but maybe you don't have the time to watch all that. So instead, I'm making this shorter version to let you still find some great hidden features. Now the menu is hidden, so you'll need to enable it. For those who already know how to do that, just skip to the next chapter of this video. But if you don't, I'll quickly show you how to do it. Now this can vary from device to device, but generally within the system settings, you'll scroll all the way to the bottom till you see about phone, tap it, and from there, scroll down again until you see build number. Quickly tap it seven times, and then you'll need to confirm your phone's passcode. Once you do that, you'll get a little toast notification saying you are now a developer. From there, go back to the main menu and under system, you'll find a new section titled developer options. Now that you're a developer, let's try out that third hidden secret. So you know when you connect your phone to the computer and then you need to do the extra annoying step of dragging down the notification panel and selecting the bottom notification to change the USB preference to file transfer. Why do we need to do all that? Instead, you can save your future self that extra step by going into the developer options, looking for a setting called default USB configuration. And in this menu, you select the default configuration for whenever you connect your phone to your computer by USB. So select file transfer. And next time you connect your phone, your files will automatically pop up without needing to do anything else. Just like there are apps that don't support a dark mode, there are also apps that don't support split screen like Instagram. So an option within the developer options called Force Activities to be Resizable forces any apps to open in split screen mode, even if they don't support it. Perfect for anyone who's a big multitasker. If you're like me, you probably own multiple devices that need to be changed daily, like a smartphone, smartwatch, headphones, tablet, laptop, etc. All those things add up, it gets messy, and your outlet can only take so much power. So a solution I came across is Ugreen's 100 watt GAN power strip, the sponsor of this video. It's an absolute beast with three AC outlets, three USB-C ports, and one USB-A port, letting me charge up to seven devices simultaneously at very fast speeds. It's even equipped with high speed 100 watt USB-C ports and the latest GAN chipset to let me charge an iPhone 13 to 60% in just 30 minutes or even a 2021 16 inch MacBook Pro in just one and a half hours. Very impressive. It's also perfect for a business or a vacation trip since it's very compact and has a very long six foot extension cord. It's insane. So next time, instead of taking multiple chargers for all your different devices, pick up Ugreen's 100 watt GAN power strip with seven ports, this 100 watt power strip box can effectively organize your cluttered cables, save space and provide a tidy workspace. I'll leave the purchase link at the top of the description. If you're willing to sacrifice your battery a little to ensure your phone's always running at its highest possible refresh rate, then force peak refresh rate is exactly the fix when your 90 or 120 hertz screen drops down to 60 hertz or less. Just a heads up though, not everyone has this option. Plus, LTPO panels have become increasingly common in phones to find a happy middle ground between demanding smooth high refresh rates while still preserving day-to-day -day battery life. But if you're doing something on your phone that might be best executed at the highest possible refresh rate, like playing a mobile game, then being able to force the peak high refresh rate might help you out. If you'd like to see which of your apps or services are currently running in the background, look for a setting called running services in the developer options. Not only will it let you stop those apps or services from running, but it'll also let you know which ones are taking up the most RAM. 
Android 12 came with awesome new privacy tiles to let you block the camera or microphone. But for those still on Android 11 or lower, you can still do the same thing. There's an option called Quick Settings Developer Tiles, and this menu will allow you to add some developer options as quick tiles in the notification shade. The Sensors Off Tiles is the one that'll let you block the camera, microphone, and even the GPS all at once. Very useful. If you like to make contents within your screen look a lot smaller to see more things at once, you can do so with the smallest width setting. This lets you change the density independent pixels of your display so that you can have everything be smaller or bigger. And just an Easter egg for you, if you're using a pixel on Android 13, you can change it to 600 and a hidden taskbar will appear at the bottom, letting you launch any of the apps that were on your home screen stock within any screen. Plus you can bring up your app drawer anytime. If you like to fake your location for security purposes, you can also do this within the developer options with an option titled Select Mock Location App. You just need to download an app like Fake GPS Location from the Play Store to get this to work. Did you know you can make your phone feel even faster by speeding up the screen's animations? Using the Window slash Transition Animation Scales and Animator Duration Scales in the developer options, you can speed everything up by changing them to 0.5x. Or if you'd like to slow everything down, maybe you're testing different screen animation styles, you can choose anything over 1.0 to be able to get a really good look at those animations. Wi-Fi scanning is another one of those system settings that might be sucking up a bunch of juice from your battery. Fortunately, in the developer options, there's a setting to toggle your app's Wi-Fi scanning. This gives you control over how often your apps can check for a Wi-Fi network to connect to which will of course preserve your battery's day-to-day -day life. Of all these hidden tricks I'm sharing with you today, the one that I use the most is System UI Demo Mode. I use this when I'm filming the videos for the channel because it keeps my status bar clean and minimal. It removes the notification icons, keeps the battery at 100%, and the time matches the Android version you're using. Pretty neat. If you're a gamer, but your phone doesn't have a gaming mode like the Pixel's running Android 11, then this next trick is for you. Using the graphics driver preference setting, you can select the graphics driver your phone uses for each individual app on your phone. This means if you set the driver preference for each game app you have to the system graphics driver, the game will open in a gaming-like mode to improve the performance and your experience playing the game. If you're not a fan of the notch or the hole punch selfie camera, you can hide it, or at least try to. You just have to find the display cutout setting within the developer options. It doesn't work all the time, but it does work for some phones. Plus, if you're watching a video or playing a game, it'll remove that distracting little notch. Last but not least, you can turn any app into a floating window when enabling the Freeform window setting. This adds an extra option in the Recents menu called Freeform, and when you tap it, the app will turn into a floating window. Then you can also resize it by pulling on its corners. The only downside is that you can't do anything else with your phone other than having it flow on the home screen. So there you have it, 15 of my favorite hidden secrets buried away in the developer options. I appreciate you sticking to the end, and if you found a setting you're excited to change, a quick thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you know of any more cool settings we should all know about, be sure to drop it down in the comments down below, and I may even give it a heart. Also be sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on, because I drop videos just like this every week. Either way, thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Kapow!